and is one of the best examples of the hero's journey. And so when, when the, uh, a USC consultant in that group that night said to me, I challenge you to write an article on this, I began to write an article. And then when I, I said, what else in The Wizard of Oz is compelling? And then all of a sudden, the, the, the story, this children's story, soon became a mythology of powerful principles. OK, we don't change in Kansas. We change in Oz. As adults, we don't change based on our old paradigms. We change when tornadoes throw us in. I use this a lot with companies helping them to do change management. When all of a sudden the market isn't the same anymore, guess where we are? We're not in Kansas anymore. We're now in Oz. And how are you going to navigate that? Most of us get scared when we go to Oz, so we go back to old ways. And we look for what? A wizard. The second principle is you have to get rid of your wizards. If you want to grow up, you have to give up your wizards. Uh, whether that's Santa Claus or you think your wife is going to make you happy. <laughs> hmm. Thanks for laughing. <clears throat> And then we have to integrate our three companions. In order, in order for us to become whole people, we have to integrate. I who do you think Dorothy's companion, the, her weakest companion was? Lion. Uh, and that's very true for many females, that the moving against side is, is the harder part for a lot of females. Tin man is often the harder part for males. Not always, mind you. And then I found uh, a few other principles in there, like you know, your witches will only get bigger unless you face them. And when you face your witch, they melt. And you can't do the journey alone. You need munchkins, tin men. I mean, you need munchkins and Glinda the Good Witch and flying monkeys, etc. So you don't need to buy the book now. I told you the whole thing. <laughs> um, so anyway, so what we have here are what I believe three ways that we interpersonally move, that we connect to other people, the way we protect ourselves. I have come to believe that these are, in fact, the three dimensions of the interpersonal world. And as much as we are open to the world, we are moving toward, we are, we are open to the world. And as much as we are king of our own or queen of our own forest, that's our height. And then how much depth we have is how much knowing we have. And I like to play around sometimes when I have time to you get a really arrogant person who doesn't care very much about people and has very little depth. That's starting to look like a phallic symbol, isn't it? Uh, or, if, or if you have a person who's open to the world and caring to everybody all the time and has very little sense of themselves or care about themselves, uh, then you're starting to look like a step where people step on you. It's fun to play with it. It's fun for me, anyway. <laughs> what I have found in presenting this over time is, over and over again, about 70% of you will immediately get the idea, OK, I can move toward, I can move away, or I can move against, which is my preferred language. But there's always 20 to 30% of people who will go, they just don't get the language. They go, OK, am I pushing forward now? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I've done a survey. It has nothing to do with IQ. It's just we, all, we think differently. Some of you in this room already understand. If I covered up the sheet, you could say against, toward, and away. And some of you, after four years of looking at this, you're going to still say pushing forward. <laughs> so what I did was I color coded it. These are the three primary ways we relate to our interpersonal world. So why not use the three primary colors? Any of you remember that from grammar school? What are the three primary colors? Red, yellow, and blue. So who would be red, you think? Who would you pick for red? My wife and I got in a fight about this, by the way. And I won, because it's my model. <laughs> Red is love. No, really? Lion, Lion. red. I, makes me see red. Yeah. Red is stop. Sorry, I know some people. I thought about today, the, the heart is red. Well, anyway. Uh, I'll tell you in a second. I'll tell you the one she hated. Which one's going to be yellow? Caution. Silence is golden. Tin. No, no. Scarecrow. 
Scarecrow's yellow. Take a step back. Let me think about this. When I do workshops on this, I will always put, I, I, I put people, they, I identify who they are, and I always put the yellows behind the reds. Because I get a, no, I put the reds behind the yellows as they rotate, and the reds are always just waiting for the yellows because they're so cautious about getting it right. And the reds are just slamming things up in the, on the thing, and they're just waiting for the yellows to finish, for God's sake. Uh, it's, got, it's really fun to watch, but it's a life lesson, too. And, of course, blue was going to be uh, um, Tin Man. Is that blue? Anyway, there you go, blue. My wife and I, she, did, she didn't get blue being Tin Man, uh, but that's not her call, is it? So, anyway. So we have three dimensions of the interpersonal world, converted it into a triangle. I have one more geometric uh, consideration, a circle, in all fairness to geometric shapes. The reason I have a circle is, and this particular uh, relationship wheel is to show you and demonstrate to you that, that it's each one can either be positive or negative. The, the, uh, the items above the line are the positive aspects of, uh, where's my pointer? There it is. I think my pointer's there. There you go, red. A positive red, determination, persuasion, being uh, decisive, telling the truth. Telling the truth is a red thing. But the, its negative version is down here. It's being selfish. It's blaming. It's arrogance. It's, it's the negative var var um, valence of the same dynamic. Same with blue. Caring, loving, empathic on the positive uh, side. And then doormat, uh, poor boundaries, kind of needy and giving over to other people. Abdicating is on the negative side. Positive side of, of, of yellow is our ability to be objective and being uh, uh, stable, self-control, thinking rather than reacting. And then on the bottom, it's detachment. It's checking out. It's avoidance. Okay? So tell me, what does this have to do with leaders? You tell me. Please consider for a moment the worst boss you've ever had. And if you can't think of a worse boss, consider yourself incredibly lucky, first of all. And then think of an employee who you hired but was, but was in a leadership position. OK, you got one of those or a few of those people. Now tell me some of the characteristics that made them the worst boss or employee you ever had. Arrogant. Arrogant. There it is, red. Go ahead. Oh, red down here. This red. There it is. I wrote it there, right? Arrogant. What else? Negative. negative. The, the negative is anything below the line is going to tend to be, you could be negative and be all three. But the, the red negative is going to be blaming other people, and the blue negative is going to be negative about life. They're going to be Eeyore, so to speak. OK, what else about this bad boss you've had? Disrespectful, another red, lack of blue. Blue it would be respecting the other. Blue is oriented around the other. Red is oriented around the self, as I said, and yellow is the objective part of this. Some more characteristics of a very bad boss. Indecisive. Indecisive, that would be blue. Freeze, remember freeze and appease? These people, when they have to make a choice, they, they freeze up. They don't know what to do. They're like Tin Man in the, in the forest when we first meet him, frozen. Selfish? Selfish. Red. I worked with a, a man who was a brilliant, brilliant businessman. Very, st very strategic. Uh, you would go into his office. Uh, I was uh, uh, coaching and, and, and consulting with this company. And you, you would go to talk with him, and he would sit there and keep typing while he's talking to you. Whenever there was a problem, he would run into his office. Which one would that be? Negative. Yellow. 
detached. A conf anyone who's conflict avoidant is going to be yellow.